Progress Report 9, April 3rd. Dr. Strauss showed me how to keep the TV turned low so now I can sleep. I don't hear a thing, and I still don't understand what it says. A few times I play it over in the morning to find out what I learned when I was sleeping, and I don't think so. Miss Kinnian says, maybe it's another language or something, but most times it sounds American. It talks so fast, faster than even Miss Gold, who was my teacher in sixth grade, and I remember she talked so fast I couldn't understand her. I told Dr. Strauss, what good is it to get smart in my sleep? I want to be smart when I'm awake. He says it's the same thing, and I have two minds. There's the subconscious and the conscious. That's how you spell it. And one don't tell the other one what it's doing. They don't even talk to each other. That's why I dream. And boy, have I been having crazy dreams. Wow! Ever since that night TV, the late, 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 late show. I forgot to ask him if it was only me or if everybody had those two minds. I just looked up the word in the dictionary Dr. Strauss gave me. The word is subconscious, adjective, of the nature of mental operations yet not present in consciousness as subconscious conflict of desires. There's more, but I still don't know what it means. This isn't a very good dictionary for dumb people like me. Anyway, the headache is from the party. My friends from the factory, Joe Carp and Frank Riley, invited me to go with them to Muggsy's Saloon for some drinks. I don't like to drink, but they said we will have lots of fun. I had a good time. Joe Carp said I should show the girls how I mop out the toilet in the factory, and he got me a mop. I showed them and everyone laughed when I told that Mr. Donegan said I was the best janitor he ever had because I like my job and do it good and never come late or miss a day except for my operation. I said Miss Kinnian always said, Charlie, be proud of your job because you do it good. Everybody laughed, and we had a good time, and they gave me lots of drinks, and Joe said, Charlie is a card when he's potted. I don't know what that means, but everybody likes me, and we have fun. I can't wait to be smart like my best friends Joe Carp and Frank Riley. I don't remember how the party was over, but I think I went out to buy a newspaper and coffee for Joe and Frank and when I came back, there was no one there. I looked for them all over till late. Then I don't remember so good, but I think I got sleepy or sick. A nice cop brought me back home. That's what my landlady, Mrs. Flynn, says. But I got a headache and a big lump on my head and black and blue all over, I think maybe I fell, but Joe Cop says it was the cop they beat up drunk sometimes. I don't think so. Miss Kinnian says cops are to help people. Anyway, I got a bad headache, and I'm sick and hurt all over. I don't think I'll drink any more. April 6th. I beat Algernon. I didn't even know I beat him until Bert the tester told me. Then the second time, I lost because I got so excited I fell off the chair before I finished. But after that, I beat him eight more times. I must be getting smart to beat a smart mouse like Algernon. But I don't feel smarter. I wanted to race Algernon some more, but Bert said, that's enough for one day. They let me hold him for a minute. He's not so bad. He's soft, like a ball of cotton. He blinks, 
And when he opens his eyes, they're black and pink on the edges. I said, can I feed him? Because I felt bad to beat him, and I wanted to be nice and make friends. Bert said, no, Algernon is a very special mouse with an operation like mine, and he was the first of all the animals to stay smart so long. He told me Algernon is so smart that every day he has to solve a test to get his food. It's a thing like a lock on a door that changes every time Algernon goes in to eat, so he has to learn something new to get his food. That made me sad, because if he couldn't learn, he would be hungry. I don't think it's right to make you pass a test to eat. How would Dr. Nima like it to have to pass a test every time he wants to eat? I think I'll be friends with Algernon. April 9th. Tonight, after work, Miss Kinian was at the laboratory. She looked like she was glad to see me, but scared. I told her, don't worry, Miss Kinian. I'm not smart yet. And she laughed. She said, I have confidence in you, Charlie. The way you struggled so hard to read and write better than all the others. At worst, you will have it for a little while, and you're doing something for science. We are reading a very hard book. I never read such a hard book before. It's called Robinson Crusoe, about a man who gets marooned on a desert island. He's smart and figures out all kinds of things so he can have a house and food, and he's a good swimmer. Only I feel sorry because he's all alone and has no friends. But I think there must be somebody else on the island because there's a picture with his funny umbrella looking at footprints. I hope he gets a friend and not be lonely. April 10th. Miss Kinian teaches me to spell better. She says, look at a word and close your eyes and say it over and over until you remember. I have lots of trouble with through, that you say through and enough and tough, that you don't say inu and to. You got to say enough and tough. That's how I used to write it before I started to get smart. I'm confused, but Miss Kinian says there's no reason in spelling. April 14th. Finished Robinson Crusoe. I want to find out more about what happens to him, but Miss Kinian says that's all there is. Why? April 15th. Miss Kinian says I'm learning fast. She read some of the progress reports, and she looked at me kind of funny. She says, I'm a fine person, and I'll show them all. I asked her why. She said, never mind, but I shouldn't feel bad if I find out that everybody isn't nice like I think. She said, for a person who God gave so little to, you done more than a lot of people with brains they never even used. I said, all my friends are smart people, but they're good. They like me, and they never did anything that wasn't nice. Then she got something in her eye, and she had to run out to the ladies' room. April 16th. Today I learned the comma. This is a comma. A period with a tail. Miss Kinian says it's important because it makes writing better. She said... Somebody could lose a lot of money if a comma isn't in the right place. I don't have any money, and I don't see how a comma keeps you from losing it. But she says everybody uses commas, so I'll use them too. April 17th. I used the comma wrong. It's punctuation. Miss Kinian told me to look up long words in the dictionary to learn to spell them. I said, what's the difference if you can read it anyway? 
She said, it's part of your education. So now I'll look up all the words I'm not sure how to spell. It takes a long time to write that way, but I think I'm remembering. I only have to look up once, and after that I get it right. Anyway, that's how come I got the word punctuation right. It's that way in the dictionary. Miss Kinnian says a period is punctuation, too, and there are lots of other marks to learn. I told her I thought all the periods had to have tails, but she said no. You got to mix them up. She showed me. How to mix them up, and now I can mix up all kinds of punctuation in my writing. There are lots of rules to learn, but I'm getting them in my head. One thing I like about dear Miss Kinnian, that's the way it goes in a business letter, if I ever go into business, is she always gives me a reason when I ask. She's a genius. I wish I could be smart like her. Punctuation is fun. April 18th. What a dope I am. I didn't even understand what she was talking about. I read the grammar book last night, and it explains the whole thing. Then I saw it was the same way as Miss Kinnian was trying to tell me, but I didn't get it. I got up in the middle of the night, and the whole thing straightened out in my mind. Miss Kinnian said that the TV working in my sleep helped out. She said I reached a plateau. That's like the flat top of a hill. After I figured out how punctuation worked, I read over all my old progress reports from the beginning. Boy, did I have crazy spelling and punctuation! I told Miss Kinnian I ought to go over the pages and fix all the mistakes, but she said, No, Charlie. Dr. Nima wants them just as they are. That's why he let you keep them after they were photostatted to see your own progress. You're coming along fast, Charlie. That made me feel good. After the lesson, I went down and played with Algernon. We don't race anymore. April 20th. I feel sick inside. Not sick like for a doctor, but inside my chest it feels empty. Like getting punched and a heartburn at the same time. I wasn't going to write about it, but I guess I got to. Because it's important. Today was the first time I ever stayed home from work. Last night, Joe Carp and Frank Riley invited me to a party. There were lots of girls and some men from the factory. I remembered how sick I got last time I drank too much, so I told Joe I didn't want anything to drink. He gave me a plain Coke instead. It tasted funny, but I thought it was just a bad taste in my mouth. We had a lot of fun for a while. Joe said I should dance with Ellen, and she would teach me the steps. I fell a few times, and I couldn't understand why, because no one else was dancing besides Ellen and me. And all the time I was tripping, because somebody's foot was always sticking out. Then, when I got up, I saw the look on Joe's face, and it gave me a funny feeling in my stomach. He's a scream, one of the girls said. Everybody was laughing. Frank said, I ain't laughed so much since we sent him off for the newspaper that night at Muggsy's and ditched him. Look at him. His face is red. He's blushing. Charlie is blushing. Hey, Ellen, what did you do to Charlie? I never saw him act like that before. I didn't know what to do or where to turn. Everyone was looking at me and laughing. 
and I felt naked. I wanted to hide myself. I ran out into the street, and I threw up. Then I walked home. It's a funny thing. I never knew that Joe and Frank and the others liked to have me around all the time to make fun of me. Now I know what it means when they say to pull a Charlie Gordon. I'm ashamed. Progress Report 11 April 21st Still didn't go into the factory. I told Mrs. Flynn, my landlady, to call and tell Mr. Donegan I was sick. Mrs. Flynn looks at me very funny lately, like she's scared of me. I think it's a good thing about finding out how everybody laughs at me. I thought about it a lot. It's because I'm so dumb, and I don't even know when I'm doing something dumb. People think it's funny when a dumb person can't do things the same way they can. Anyway... Now I know I'm getting smarter every day. I know punctuation, and I can spell good. I like to look up all the hard words in the dictionary, and I remember them. I'm reading a lot now, and Miss Kinnian says I read very fast. Sometimes I even understand what I'm reading about, and it stays in my mind. There are times when I can close my eyes and think of a page, and it all comes back like a picture. Besides history, geography, and arithmetic, Miss Kinnian said I should start to learn a few foreign languages. Dr. Strauss gave me some more tapes to play while I sleep. I still don't understand how that conscious and unconscious mind works, but Dr. Strauss says not to worry yet. He asked me to promise that when I start learning college subjects next week, I wouldn't read any books on psychology. That is, until he gives me permission. I feel a lot better today, but I guess I'm still a little angry that all the time people were laughing and making fun of me because I wasn't so smart. When I become intelligent, like Dr. Strauss says, with three times my IQ of 68, then maybe I'll be like everyone else and people will like me and be friendly. I'm not sure what an IQ is. Dr. Niemer said it was something that measured how intelligent you were like a scale in the drugstore weighs pounds. But Dr. Strauss had a big argument with him and said an IQ didn't weigh intelligence at all. He said an IQ showed how much intelligence you could get, like the numbers on the outside of a measuring cup. You still had to fill the cup up with stuff. Then, when I asked Bert, who gives me my intelligence tests and works with Algernon, he said that both of them were wrong. Only I had to promise not to tell them he said so. Bert says that the IQ measures a lot of different things, including some of the things you learned already, and it really isn't any good at all. So I still don't know what IQ is, except that mine is going to be over 200 soon. I didn't want to say anything, but I don't see how, if they don't know what it is or where it is, I don't see how they know how much of it you've got. Dr. Niemer says I have to take a Rorschach test tomorrow. I wonder what that is. April 22nd. I found out what a Rorschach is. It's the test I took before the operation, the one with the ink blots on the pieces of cardboard. The man who gave me the test was the same one. I was scared to death of those ink blots. I knew he was going to ask me to find the pictures, and I knew I wouldn't be able to. I was thinking to myself, if only there was some way of knowing what kind of pictures were hidden there. Maybe there weren't any pictures at all. Maybe it was just a trick to see if I was dumb enough to look for something that wasn't there. Just thinking about that made me sore at him. All right, Charlie, he said. You've seen these cards before, remember? Of course I remember. The way I said it, he knew I was angry, and he looked surprised. Yes, of course. Now I want you to look at this one. What might this be? What do you see on this card? People see all sorts of things in these ink blots. Tell me what it might be for you, what it makes you think of. 
I was shocked. That wasn't what I had expected him to say at all. You mean there are no pictures hidden in those ink blots? He frowned and took off his glasses. What? Pictures hidden in the ink blots. Last time you told me that everyone could see them and you wanted me to find them too. He explained to me that the last time he had used almost the exact same words he was using now. I didn't believe it, and I still have the suspicion that he misled me at the time just for the fun of it. Unless, I don't know anymore, could I have been that feeble-minded? We went through the cards slowly. One of them looked like a pair of bats tugging at something. Another one looked like two men fencing with swords. I imagined all sorts of things. I guess I got carried away. But I didn't trust him anymore, and I kept turning them around and even looking on the back to see if there was anything there I was supposed to catch. While he was making his notes, I peeked out of the corner of my eye to read it. But it was all in code that looked like this. WF plus A, DDF minus AD original, WF minus A, SF plus object. The test still doesn't make sense to me. It seems to me that anyone could make up lies about things that they didn't really see. How could he know I wasn't making a fool of him by mentioning things that I didn't really imagine? Maybe I'll understand it when Dr. Strauss lets me read up on psychology. April 25th. I figured out a new way to line up the machines in the factory, and Mr. Donegan says it will save him $10,000 a year in labor and increased production. He gave me a $25 bonus. I wanted to take Joe Carp and Frank Riley out to lunch to celebrate, but Joe said he had to buy some things for his wife, and Frank said he was meeting his cousin for lunch. I guess it'll take a little time for them to get used to the changes in me. Everybody seems to be frightened of me. When I went over to Amos Borg and tapped him on the shoulder, he jumped up in the air. People don't talk to me much anymore or kid around the way they used to. It makes the job kind of lonely. April 27th. I got up the nerve today to ask Miss Kinnian to have dinner with me tomorrow night to celebrate my bonus. At first she wasn't sure it was right, but I asked Dr. Strauss and he said it was okay. Dr. Strauss and Dr. Niemer don't seem to be getting along so well. They're arguing all the time. This evening when I came in to ask Dr. Strauss about having dinner with Miss Kinnian, I heard them shouting. Dr. Niemer was saying that it was his experiment and his research, and Dr. Strauss was shouting back that he contributed just as much because he found me through Miss Kinnian and he performed the operation. Dr. Strauss said that someday thousands of neurosurgeons might be using his technique all over the world. Dr. Niemer wanted to publish the results of the experiment at the end of this month. Dr. Strauss wanted to wait a while longer to be sure. Dr. Strauss said that Dr. Niemer was more interested in the chair of psychology at Princeton than he was in the experiment. Dr. Niemer said that Dr. Strauss was nothing but an opportunist who was trying to ride to glory on his coattails. When I left afterwards, I found myself trembling. I don't know why for sure, but it was as if I'd seen both men clearly for the first time. I remember hearing Bert say that Dr. Niemer had a shrew of a wife who was pushing him all the time to get things published so that he could become famous. Bert said that the dream of her life was to have a big-shot husband. Was Dr. Strauss really trying to ride on his coattails? April 28th. I don't understand why I never noticed how beautiful Miss Kinnian really is. She has brown eyes and feathery brown hair that comes to the top of her neck. She's only 34. I think from the beginning I had the feeling that she was an unreachable genius and very, very old. Now, every time I see her, she grows younger and more lovely. We had dinner and a long talk. When she said that I was coming along so fast that soon I'd be leaving her behind, I laughed. It's true, Charlie. You're already a better reader than I am. 
You can read a whole page at a glance, while I can take in only a few lines at a time, and you remember every single thing you read. I'm lucky if I can recall the main thoughts and the general meaning. I don't feel intelligent. There are so many things I don't understand. She took out a cigarette, and I lit it for her. You've got to be a little patient. You're accomplishing in days and weeks what it takes normal people to do in half a lifetime. That's what makes it so amazing. You're like a giant sponge now, soaking things in, facts, figures, general knowledge, and soon you'll begin to connect them, too. You'll see how the different branches of learning are related. There are many levels, Charlie, like steps on a giant ladder that take you up higher and higher to see more and more of the world around you. I can see only a little bit of that, Charlie, and I won't go much higher than I am now. But you'll keep climbing up and up and see more and more, and each step will open new worlds that you never even knew existed. She frowned. I hope... I just hope to God. What? Never mind, Charles. I just hope I wasn't wrong to advise you to go into this in the first place. I laughed. How could that be? It worked, didn't it? Even Algernon is still smart. We sat there silently for a while, and I knew what she was thinking about as she watched me toying with the chain of my rabbit's foot and my keys. I didn't want to think of that possibility any more than elderly people want to think of death. I knew that this was only the beginning. I knew what she meant about levels because I'd seen some of them already. The thought of leaving her behind made me sad. I'm in love with Miss Kinian.